Hi there folks, my name is NovaWing24 and welcome to the Nova Wrap, your one stop location for your simulation release news and goings on from the week that was. So here we are on Sunday the 1st of July 2018 for another exciting year and for those in Australia, happy new financial year. And we are jumping straight into the sim release news this week with the guys over at Lockheed Martin releasing their latest update for Prepared V4. So this brings up Prepared V4 up to Prepared version 4.3. Three. Uh, now there's been a basically the usual thing that we see a lot of bug fixes here uh, most of which are around VR and VR settings and the ability of certain um, features to actually be used in VR. Uh, the biggest one they've got a couple of new features here of uh, vehicle panels being used in VR as well as window definitions being created and applied to prepare win windows as well so for customizing how things appear. The other couple of major changes that they've made uh, and additions they've made as well is that they brought in a C-130 has finally been brought into Prepared V4 and not only just available for Prepared V4 but it's actually natively available inside the sim. Now for those who have been flying in ESP sims for a long time you'll be very familiar with it, you'll probably be very familiar with this. Uh, this is actually the Captain Sim C-130 that's been uh, made its way into Prepared V4 so uh, obviously you've been licensed to Lockheed Martin and provided to them for for a, uh, as a shipping with it uh, and it probably explains why we never saw it on uh, Captain Sim's roadmap for the content to be updated to prepared V4. Uh, so with this one you get a series of different options available you get the AC-130 Spectre, the C-130H, C-130J, J-30, the really stretch really long one, uh, the HC-130 and the KC-130. Now the KC-130 is one that's sort of been uh, making the rounds through all the, um, uh, through all the me media and material that Lockheed Martin has been pushing out because it has kept the feature of the fact that it can release the hose and the hose and droves. So uh, that is all in there as well. There's a few other things, as I said, a lot of bug fixes, a lot of it, especially around VR and VR options, and a lot of graphical tweaks and improvements uh, to actually sort of uh, give you those extra frames that everybody wants, especially for VR. So uh, for obviously, as usual, a free update for, um, for within, as we are within the major milestone version. Uh, there's also been a few Sim Director updates as well. Not a lot of people use Sim Director, but if you do use it for creating some content, you'll be uh, very interested to go through here. I'm not going to go through all the details uh, of that one. There, there is a full list available over at uh, the uh, Lockheed Martin Prepare website for you to have a look at if you so desire. Uh, for just simply log in to your prepared account uh, on the uh, website and download the new installer. Uh, because there is, they have made changes to all elements of um, prepared v4, um, you are probably going to be looking at, you can, uh, there are a couple different ways you can do the installation. Um, you can either do just the client or you can do the client content scenery and SDK. Uh, as I said, all four components have had updates and changes this time. So it perhaps might be worth doing a full uninstall and reinstall, but as always, that is up to you. Uh, and how you manage your sim. Um, can I just point out as well here, because I have done the update here uh, and tested it out. Uh, one, um, I'm very happy with the update, uh, very impressed with it. Uh, particularly with the fact that I can now access um, my scenery library settings um, and all the things that I normally have to go all the way into the sim to get to, all the sub-menus to get to the sim for, I can access straight from the launcher. So that's a great move, awesome work on that one. Um, but the other thing as well is just a shout out to developers. Um, guys, there is a reason why LM make the SDK available to you guys um, and encourage you to actually use it. Um, there is a, a lot of the community and a lot of developers out there who bitched and whinged and moaned about Dovetail not providing the SDK, even though they did. Um, guys, the thing is, LM's been providing an SDK since day one, but it seems that only some developers read it and only some of them read it have started reading it very recently there is a reason why they have like lm have and prepared v3 onwards so this has been around since v3 uh, which has the option to be able to do as uh, uh you, you don't even have to you don't install your add-ons or you don't have to install your add-ons directly into the core sim so you don't have to mess with files now the really important reason to do this to developers in case you didn't know um, and also for end users is that when you're doing things like um, updates from of milestone versions it doesn't mess with the stuff you've installed the best install the best add-ons that I've got lately 
from Turbulent Design, um, and the, uh, the the I'm doing the, uh, the the beta test, the early access version of Just Flights Traffic uh, Global, um, and a few others, which actually pay attention to to lock LM's SDK and actually make use of that. Which means that they're already there; they're not affected by this. I can uninstall and reinstall my entire prepared, and nothing was affected in terms of scenery, in terms of those add-ons. So, just a shout out to developers: pay attention to the SDK. Okay. Getting off my soapbox now. Thank you very much. Uh, as I said, this one is now fully. Uh, as I said, most developers have already come out board, uh, work on board, and have already released patches and availables for it. Um, I think uh, and Active Sky have one. That was a big one for a lot of people. Active Sky have their um, their patches and available, and it's working really well. So uh, yes, as I said, free update. Go forth, update it if you are a prepared v4 user available now. All right, sticking in the vein of uh, prepared V4. Um, so we saw the guys over at Latin VFR release their uh, latest scenery release uh, into the market uh, of Baltimore, Washington, in Baltimore, Washington International Airport for prepared V4 exclusively. Um, so this is an airport um, that sort of primarily services services the city of Baltimore. Um, it does do a bit of catch-all traffic um, from uh, Washington, D.C., uh, sort, of, sort of from the south uh, from time to time. Uh, now, this one's been uh, fully constructed to do a highly detailed resolution of the airport and uh, the, surrounding ter the surrounding terminals and areas uh, with fully customized 3D terrain mesh for the area as well. So um, po that possibly indicates we might get slight runways or at least something, you know, something close to that. Uh, very highly de detailed and animated SODE-compatible jetways, uh, high detailed ground polygons with shaders and effects for that as well. Full use of um, the dynamic lighting has been included as well. Uh, 15 square miles of photoreal scenery with with hand plates autogen for the surrounding area as well as in, including downtown buildings with custom uh, VFR and points of interest ratings as well. Uh, full night effects, night lighting included as well. Um, uh, customized and, uh, and also customized and detailed seasonal textures as well, um, which you uh, are not unfortunately live within the sim. It does require a configuration tool, but still, it it's looking kind of cool and kind of interesting to sort of see a snow-covered uh, airport. That's kind of cool, kind of interesting. I kind of like the look of it. Um, it's a little frustrating you're going to do it myself, like to manually do things, but eh, you know, it still looks interesting anyway. Um, but yes, so if you are wanting to pick this one up, this one's coming in uh, sort of um, fairly, fairly average price for the land VFR stuff lately. Uh, and again, looking for the most part, looks pretty good, pretty detailed, and pretty good as well. Uh, so this one's coming in at twenty-seven US dollars, or your regional equivalent, available now from Sim Markets. And another prepared V4 exclusive release this week. We saw the guys over at JustSim release their rendition of Anatalia International Airport in Turkey. Um, so this is uh, sort of like it's a very important destination for tourists uh, for tourists during the tourist season. Um, sort of being a uh, sort of gateway to uh, to south to southwest Turkey and the Mediterranean. And uh, has been uh, handles a lot of passengers, and so it's uh, unsurprising that uh, they've been just seem to be making a lot of destination airports. So it's unsurprising they've come out with this one. Uh, now, as usual, from the guys over at uh, Just Sim, endeavor to make it fully compatible with FTX Global and FTX uh, Open LC for Europe. Uh, full compatibility with um, the prepared uh, V4 uh, SDK, including customized ground polygons, full implementation of dynamic custom lighting as well, um, high resolution textures for the ground the uh, runway as well as buildings, full support um, of uh, um, AI traffic, custom models for the not only the airport but also the surrounding town as well, uh, full implementation of night effects, uh, AI traffic, through birds, grass, a uh, whole heap of slew of features that we're used to seeing, um, the full glass reflections implemented because of uh, prepared as well. Um, and uh, once again, the part that always frustrates me with um, just sim, it just drives me nuts is the fact that uh, they've got their um, uh, full support for SODE and GSX is coming in two to three weeks. Just Sim, seriously, can you just put out a finished damn product? Seriously. Like, I try and, like, your stuff generally looks pretty damn amazing, but the fact that Every single time you are putting this out with saying that the, your, you know, a key selling point is going to be out after release, and then I go back a month or two months down the track and look back at your releases, and you haven't updated the description. There's still no word if you're supporting the things, you know, uh, SOD and GSX like you kept saying you're going to. Like seriously, guys, 
can you stop and start putting things out when they're actually finished? Just going to throw it out there. If you are wanting to pick this one up in the current state, uh, you are looking at paying $25 US or your original equivalent available now from Sim Markets. All right, moving out of the P3D V4 exclusiveness, but sticking with the ESP platforms. Um, so the guys are over at um, MFSG, so Malaysian Flight Sim Group, they've they continued their role of releases this week uh, with a, another release. But this one, this one for them, they've uh, sort of moved away from Japan and moved closer to home. Um, so they've come out with uh, Kota Kanabalu uh, International Airport which is the international airport of the city of the same name, uh, in the state capital of Sabaya in Malaysia. So this is about eight kilometers southwest of the city. Uh, it's probably one of the busiest airports in the region as well. Out, 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 out. It's second busiest behind Kuala Lumpur. So I've spent a lot of time in KL in transit over the years, uh, but primarily serves as an airport for uh, sort of hubs and connections throughout the Asia regions, um, as an, and as I said, as an alternate to KL. Uh, so this is a high detailed rendition of the airport, uh, of the airport itself, as well as the surrounding uh, terrain, as including a customized photos uh, includes customized photo scenery, ground poly, train mesh for the area as well. Um, fully compatible with AR traffic uh, with static jetways, so no SODE or dynamic jetways at all for this one. Uh, there is static static uh, AI, static aircraft as well as fully AI traffic compatible, and as well as full dynamic lighting support for prepared V4 as well. The other thing that's interesting about this, and the thing that I always like about the AR guys at MFSG, is the fact that one thing will get you all the ES extended ESP families. So this will work with uh, FS9, FSX, FSX Steam Edition, and prepared V3 and V4. So um, really cool that I go. I always love the fact that these guys are still developing for FS9. That's just awesome. I really love it. Um, looking at it, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty decent. Um, the textures and the actual graphics for the, for the buildings itself for the actual airport look great. Um, the only thing that I sort of have an issue with is that I do sort of see uh, there is a bit of an issue with some of the photo reel of the surrounding area. Um, it just doesn't quite seem to gel quite right. I think some of the city photo reel, some of the surrounding area photo reel, but you know, that could just be the screenshots they've used. Um, but there's a, yeah, that's the, the trouble with photo reel is that photo reel can also be, uh, it can be really, um, it, it immersive and it could also be really unimmersive as well. I can really throw it as well. So it's a hit and miss scenario. But otherwise, overall, for the price tag, looking pretty good as well. So this one's coming in at 17 US dollars or your regional equivalent available now on Sim Market. And other ESP platform releases for the week. The guys over at Flight One have come out with the FS Stall Effects add on. So this is a, an interesting thing. So, um,. I, this kind of reminds me a little bit um, of AOA uh, of AOA of A to A's Accu feel a little bit. Um, so FS, FS stall effects is essentially um, pretty much does what it says on the tin. Uh, it literally sort of adds in some sort of the, the buffer thing that you feel in an aircraft when you're actually when you're close to the stall zone and sort of trying to actually give you that feel of an aircraft when it's about to stall without having to rely on a, a stall warning horn and stuff like that. So um, I've got a couple of mixed feelings about this. Um, it, as an idea, it's a, a brilliant one. Um, it, it does address a sort of shortcoming that the core ESP uh, platform does not have it doesn't have at the moment I know there was inroads for flight sim world to try and get into in there x-plane kind of does stuff as well but it's a bit again it's all a bit hit and miss and it is one of the hardest things to actually simulate in a, in a simulator whether it be you know the the home ones that we use or even big professional ones um, stalling is one of those things that is very very challenging to actually replicate so this one really tries to at least do that as well. Um, it also includes the option, so it gives you pitch buffeting, roll buffeting, um, buffer incident rate for to actually sort of as the um, uh, and and when the actually sort of the buffets start before the actual sort of the in, uh, onset of the stall, as well as also including um, the ability to be emulate high speed um, high speed stalls and high speed buffeting as well, um, which is something that is kind of interesting um, for those anyone who have actually flown the OV10 um, by Piglet, um, that thing. Will, is very susceptible to a high speed stall. You can fly incredibly slowly, but it's also very quick, uh, and you can high speed stall it 
very easily. Um, so it's very interesting that it's also it's also looking to mod, try and model the high speed stalling as well. It also it uh, does uh, modeling some engine vibration as well um, to actually sort of how that impacts as well. How that then it seems to do it by essentially shaking the actual viewpoint is essentially what it does. How this is going to go with third-party camera utilities like uh, Chase Plane and Easy Dock. Um, that's something that I would actually think is, is actually going to have an issue with. I actually think it's because it's it's not actually trying to change the physics of the engine or the physics of the of the, the flight models. It's simply trying to change the uh, it's actually tries to change the user perception and like the, your user perception as the as the the eye point. So I have a funny feeling that this may have issues with. I I, I don't know. I haven't tried it. I haven't tested this. And I haven't seen the documentation um, that says that it is or it isn't compatible but I have, I have concerns that if you are using a camera utility like Chase Plane or Easy Dock that you may have issues with this one and the fact is, is that Chase Plane and Easy Dock kind of have a lot of these features already built in so mm. it's as I said it's as I said I've got mixed feelings about it it's interesting it's, it definitely does look at, 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 a, at, a, at a deficiency of the ESP platform extended ESP family um, so but it's yeah I'm not sure how the implementation's gone so mm. But if you are wanting to try this one, this one is available from Flight One uh, for twenty US dollars or your original equivalent. Available now. In other ESP platform releases for the weeks, so we saw the guys over at Captain Sim have released their seven five seven Captain reboot. Um, so uh, this is the, I think it's the. I think it's the third rendition of the seven five seven, the seven five seven two hundred. That they've released uh, now. This is uh, has previously been released for prepared v4, um, but has now made its way into the 32-bit platforms with compatibility for our FSX and prepared v3. Uh, so uh, no feature loss. Um, so it does is still including uh, a fully functional flight deck um, uh, with re fully recoded and updated avionics, uh, full customized night lighting, co cockpit state management by the FMC, uh, a complete rendition of the external and internal modeling, including the passenger cabin, a uh, full set of high-resolution text. Uh, 2D panels as well as a full 3D cockpit realization as well. Uh, custom views, high detail model, and a whole heap of lighting effects as well, uh, and the authentic sound set provided by Turbine Sound Studio. So basically, it's the exact same thing for prepared, but squished down, taken from 64 bit into 32 bit, um, and thrown into um, FSX, FSX Steam Edition and prepared V3. Uh, now, it does come in cheaper than the prepared V4 version, so coming in uh, about six bucks cheaper, coming in at $70 instead of $76. Um, so so it's got a bit of a saving there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Yeah, really, uh, they, they are looking at expanding it, including um, expansions for different engine types and different um, uh, types of aircraft, including the freighter um, and the th Dash 300 version. So this is just the Dash 200 version at the moment. Um, looking at eventually adding in the uh, the, the Rolls of the 200 with the Pratt and Whitney engines. They are looking at adding in a 200 with the Rolls Royce engines later on down the track. Uh, but yeah, for now it's just the um, core 200 Pratt and Whitney version. So if you want to pick this one up uh, for your uh, your 32 bit sim, you can pick this one up now from Captain Sim's web store, uh, or you can also pick it up for Prepare V4 uh, from the same store as well. Alright, moving out of the ESP world and moving into the X-Plane world, the guys over at Orbix have come, come and continued on with uh, bringing content over into X-Plane this week with their release of Monument Valley. So Monument Valley was, um, has, they've actually had that around for the ESP platforms for quite a while uh, and it's uh, one of their sort of scenery series ones. It's not an airport specific, it's, it's more of a sort of closely tied to a region, um, but this one is specifically taking the Monument Valley sort of national park now, of course, that includes, um, uh, which is a, a big part in, uh, in uh, the Arizona-Utah border area. Um, it's part of the Colorado Plateau. Basically, it's this beautiful, iconic part of the American Midwest, uh, which has these huge, big sort of sandstone mountains rising out of the desert. And it just looks absolutely absolutely beautiful like it's absolutely an incredible incredible sight to have um funnily enough there's, there's sort of uh there, there was a there was a uh, there was a critic uh, keith phipps uh, sort of quipped uh, a few years ago which basically um the, uh, the, the, the the it's 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 five square miles uh, have defined what decades of moviegoers think of what they imagine the American Midwest to be, um, and it is so true. It is so true. You think of it like you know cowboy films and the American Midwest. You think of Monument Valley. You think of these epic um, structures.
structures and sort of you know coming you know, towering uh, monoliths coming out of the ground it's so true so it's great to actually see it you know modeled you know beautifully well um in in a sim as i said uh, this has been around for the esp platforms for a while they've been so uh, been remastered and redone and now brought over into x-plane now we've got uh, uh, 21 custom 3D models of the main peaks. Um, this has been redone with 4K textures for all of the mountains in the area as well. Uh, fully customized models for not just the uh, the terrain peaks as well, but also for uh, the Navajo parks and also um, airstrip uh, UT25 and four regional helipads all included as well, as well as the Navajo Visitor Center and a few other features of the area as well. So um, this is looking pretty damn amazing. Um, I'm really looking forward to having a look at the next plane, um, but I do believe our friends over at Helisima are actually uh, they're doing a review at the moment so if you want to have a look at a review of it and see what it likes from a helicopter from a frantic palm tree perspective head on over to helisima.com and check out the review there available now but if you are wanting to pick this one up for yourself available now for explain it's coming in at 25 Australian dollars uh, so about 20 US dollars available now from Orbix Direct Alrighty, moving out of the flight sim world and moving into the uh, world of high speed racing. Well, we saw the release of The Crew 2 this week. Um, I wanted to bring to this interesting bit, I wanted to, bring, to, to highlight this because I saw this, it's, it's, it's always, sometimes it's a bit surprising when things come out this time of year because of the Steam, Steam sales or whatever, but... It's an Ubisoft product, and it doesn't come. It's not coming out on special and launch disc or anything like that. Um, the Crew Two basically um, is a sort of I, I want to say slow, uh, like a like a, a, a motorhead fest is pretty much what it is. Um, but it seems to be a little confused about what it wants to be. So this is essentially um, it allows you to race. You know, it, it ostensibly claims that you can race anything. You've got a slew of cars to choose from. You've got power boats, dirt bikes, high speed bikes. You've got like road bikes. You've got um, uh, river cruisers, high speed power boats. You've got uh, what looks like a, an extra 500 um, and a PC21 from a, one of the DLC, the launch DLC pieces as well, um, along with uh, sort of you know beach buggy type things like it's just an insane amount of like motorsport sort of things or whether it be air land or sea and all or, or, or anything in between so it's looking really interesting in what it has but I, I this is tempered me by the fact that there it is very light on description about what exactly is in it it's sort of claiming that you've got this energy you know high impact adrenaline fuel things of racing all this stuff but it's very light on detail about what vehicles you can race about what things you can do about what is licensed what's not what tracks and stuff like that it's very yeah it's hmm and visually it looks pretty stunning it, it looks pretty stunning visually um but as i said it's just it's very interesting there's a lot of mixed very mixed opinion pieces coming out about this um now this one's coming out in um three different three or four different editions uh for this one so it's available either direct from ubisoft or available on steam so the base title comes in at 70 US dollars for the base edition. Um, you can upgrade that to a deluxe or gold edition, um, which includes uh, either a, like includes additional DLC. So if you go up for the deluxe edition or higher, uh, you get a Pilatus PC21 aircraft, you get a uh, Airbath 500 monster truck edition. So basically it's a little hatchback like micro car with monster truck wheels. Not even going to ask why. Um, and then you've got a Ford F-150 as a, as a race truck. Why would you race something that big? But anyway, um, yeah, so that, that that's the, the Deluxe Edition. And then we can upgrade to the Gold Edition, which also includes the Season Pass um, of all the future vehicles as well. So um, the Season Pass by itself is 50 bucks, uh, And the, C, the Gold Edition comes in at 105 US dollars of original equivalent. So... Um, there's a lot of stuff like seems to be going on here, but at the same time, as I said, my my concern is the fact that there's a lot of it's very light on detail about what it is, and it's very the trailer is very flashy, very pretty, but um, yeah, just as I said, it's very interesting just looking at that. So anyway, yes, if you are yeah, is it, if you want to pick this one up, uh, is it either available on Steam or from Ubisoft? Um, have a look, see if it's for you. Um, but yeah, I said perhaps read the reviews before you purchase. It might be an idea. So there you go. Mm. As I said, if you want to pick this one up, available now, starting at 70 US dollars or your original equivalent, available now. 
And rounding out the simulation news for this release, the guys over at Trains A New Era have come out with a new piece of DLC this week with Rheingold 1962. Um, so, basically, the Rheingold uh, line is a line that sort of goes from Switzerland um, through into uh, through Germany and then into the Low Countries, in, into uh, the Netherlands. And it first started running um, in the 1920s, and it's a very luxurious route, and essentially was seen as the um, the, the Western European version of the Orient Express. Um, obviously, there was that little thing called the Second World War happened, and it's all because you know everything stopped from, uh, stopped during that period. But then, in the post-war era, when sort of um, Germany was sort of getting back on its feet, and you know tourism was starting to become a thing again, uh, 1960s it was sort of reborn and brought back into uh, brought back into life, and actually sort of and they tried to recapture some of that, um, and it's. It's sort of seen as that, like recapturing that that last of that you know elegant experience of uh, of rail travel. It's still very high speed, uh, especially for the time. The cruising speeds of over 160 kilometers an hour. Um, so that's something definitely for for, the, for that era was a very very high speed thing. Um, but it was served as a, as a sort of last step of luxury and also some innovation, interesting factors as well. With a um, it, it pioneered a humpback dining car, which essentially was like a dome, which allowed you to actually sort of you know watch the uh, was an uninterrupted view of the sky and the terrain around you as you zipped by and uh, and enjoyed your five star meal so it's a, a bit of a it's a, it's an interesting sort of look back into a bygone era of travel um, that even air travel back in those times was sort of still very fairly luxurious and yeah it kind of does that as well so mm. so it's the full Rhinegold uh, 1962 train uh, including uh, all the major coaches, rolling stock, uh, the uh, iconic humpback dining car um, as well as the dome car as well so it's a, it's a very Interesting, very detailed look. Includes also not only the high detail of the externals, but also the internals as well. So you can actually experience what some of that luxury on the internals look, look like. Uh, and comes through with uh, high reviews as well as full industry support. Uh, so configurable destination size, animated connected brakes, uh, connected couplings, supporting tail lights, and day and night versions for full details. So uh, comes with two career scenarios for the era as well. So um, this one's available now. So this one's available either direct from the Trains and New Era store uh, or available from the Steam for the Steam version available now, coming in at twenty US dollars or your original equivalent available now. And with that, that now rounds out the uh, f the simulation release news for this week. Thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these videos and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search Nerdwing24. All right, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Stay guys to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.